So far we have considered partitional clustering, which tiles the space in a flat way. In hierarchical clustering, one considers a tiling at different resolutions. So on a very large scale, one would consider all data points as one cluster, and at the very fine scale, one would consider every data point as a cluster, and in between, one sort of has to see how the structure of the data uh, suggests clusters at different resolutions. So here we look at agglomerative hierarchical clustering, which means we start by considering every data point as a separate cluster, and then we merge the points. And we merge the points that are closest by. So we look for the two points that are nearest by, and we define, well, these should be then one cluster. So as long as we just merge single points, that's fine. It's quite obvious what the distance would be. And well, at least in Euclidean space, it would be the Euclidean distance. But if the points have grouped already to small clusters, one needs to define what actually distance means. And the gradual merging of the clusters into larger clusters leads to a tree-like structure. So with very fine branches in the beginning, if you do agglomerative hierarchical clustering, and then fusing more and more of these leaves until you end up with a stem uh, with a trunk that represents all the points as one cluster. So the key in this algorithm now is uh, the definition of the distance between two clusters, because we want to fuse clusters that are, that are close to close by. And here we see two different distance measures. It's the so-called single link and complete link measure or method in the end. So let D be a normal distance measure between two points, and usually it would be the Euclidean distance if you have points in Euclidean space. Then the single link method looks at all the points in one cluster and all the points in the other cluster and looks at the smallest distance um, that you can calculate from all the points in one cluster and all the points in the other cluster. While the complete link method looks at the maximum distance, the largest distance between those points. So now why is this called single link method and complete link method? That's illustrated in this image here. So the idea would be that you draw links between points and you start with points that are nearby. So here let's look for the, okay, so these two would be the, no, let's take another color. So these two would be the nearby nearest points. So you would actually connect them first. Then you go for the next nearby, etc. and so on. Um, and let's assume these points here in cluster number 1 and in cluster number 2 are connected already. Then the question is, so what's the distance between these two clusters? And in the single link method, it's the smallest distance. So that means you just have to draw, if you if you sort of continue drawing links between nearby points with increasing distance, then as soon as there's one link between these two clusters, these two clusters would be considered fused, right, merged. While in the complete link method, you go for the largest distance. That means until you come to this pair of points to draw a li link between them, you have already drawn all the links between all the other pairs of points. So the last link between two clusters would then define them as being merged. That means you need a complete set of links for the complete link method and just a single link for the single link method.
And here this is would be the distance in the single link method between these two clusters and the distance between with a single link method between these two clusters and these would be the complete link uh, distances between the clusters. Okay, so now how does the algorithm work? So take a somewhat smaller example here. So let's assume we have these five points in 2D and we do the single link method. Right? Single link method means we I mean in either case we connect points, so we draw links between points with increasing distances. It's just in the single link method we consider two clusters to be merged as soon as there's one link between these two clusters, while in the complete link method we consider two clusters being merged only if we have a complete set of links between all the points in one cluster and all the points in the other cluster. So let's see how this works here. So these are the closest points, so that's the first link we draw. And since we have single points, that connects the two points to one cluster in either case, right? Whether we use a single link method or the complete link method, doesn't matter. Uh, so what we do is here we draw an A for the point A and a B for the point P for the point B, and then we join them with such a in such a way. And here along the ordinate we draw the cluster distance. So this height here is exactly the distance between these two points. That's assumed to be one here. Okay, next thing we do. Okay, so then we continue. Okay, we have drawn this here as well. Uh, okay, so what's the next closest distance, the next link that we draw here would be this one. This one. Now in the single link method, this link is sufficient to connect A, B with C. Right, so we have C as a third point here, and we connect C with A, B at this distance. And this distance should be so that's yeah the numbers is actually the number in which they are connected, not the distances. Yeah. Good. So while for the complete link method this is not sufficient because this link is still missing. Now if we draw the next link, sort of that means the link between the next nearest data points, we would connect these two pictures. And that doesn't make a difference here in the single link method because these three points already belong to one cluster, while it makes a difference here because now um, A, B, points A, B, which belong to one cluster, are connected, completely connected with point C, which is the other cluster. So what we do is we take C as a third point and we connect them by a line here. And this distance is the cluster distance. And now in this case, the cluster distance is this connection here. Right? While in the single link method, it's this connection. Therefore, in the complete link method, we have a higher value here than there. And that's generally true because the, comp the largest distance between two po points in two clusters obviously is larger than the smallest distance, right? So therefore, um, the values, even if the cluster is the same, the value at which this happens is general, generally larger or equal to the value in the single link method. Okay, so next distance that we connect be probably this one, this one. So in the single link method, now point D is connected with the cluster ABC. That's drawn here. 
D is connected to ABC at this distance, and this distance here is this distance. Here, this is not sufficient yet. Right? So this is not sufficient to connect D to these three points. So what's the next smallest distance? It's not so obvious. Let's assume it's this distance. Okay, here again, connecting E with this part yeah, is sufficient to make the whole thing one big cluster. So E would be connected with ABCD at this distance. So this distance here. And now everything is one cluster and we would be done for the single link method. In the complete link method, D is not connected yet with ABC because it doesn't have connections to all the points in this cluster. But E and D have, are completely connected because both clusters belong, sort of consist of just one point. So we would connect D and E at this distance. And this distance is this distance here, which is the same as this height. Okay, now we have, need to continue filling it filling in connections, so maybe the next one would be this. Still, ED would not be fully connected to ABC, right? So maybe I draw the clusters that we have right now. So right now we have color. Right now we have this cluster. And we have this cluster. Yeah. So the next closest distance might be probably this. Still does not connect these two clusters. The next one might be this. And I don't know, maybe the next one might be this. The last one now might be this. Now this one is connected with all these three, and this one is also connected with all these three. So now we have a complete link connection um, between these two clusters, and that's the point where ABC gets connected with DE. It was this connection. And this then is the distance to produce the full cluster picture. So you see, it's not only that the Distances are larger for complete link method than for the single link method in general. Uh, it can also emerge a different structure. Okay, so this now here is... Um, Is the formal algorithm that you have. So first we start with each point as a cluster and we represent each one point cluster as a point on the abscissa of a graph. Uh, so that means we as we have seen here A, B, C, D, E on the on the abscissa, but we might rearrange them, right? Depending on when they get joined, we might change their order later. We find the two closest clusters. And finding the two closest clusters in the single link method, or in both methods, 
would might involve drawing several of the links, right? But as soon um, as we sort of connect two clusters, that would mean we have found the closest clusters. If you have that, draw vertical lines for the two clusters that are connected in the horizontal line at the cluster distance. So this is this merging process and if we, depending on which clusters we merge, we might have to rearrange the points on the abscissa to enable. Yes, and we simply repeat this until we are done. And that results in these dendrograms. Okay, that always gives a result, but the question is um, how valid this result is. Now, one way to do uh, to check this is to introduce some noise on the positions of the data points and if the dendrogram is sort of robust with respect to that noise then the, dr the structure of the dendrogram is meaningful and if not, if there's a lo large variation then probably it's not so meaningful but one can also see it from the dendrograms themselves namely if the the distances between the merging processes are large, then this will probably be robust with respect to a change in the position of the data points. But if this were more like, if let's say this would look like this, Then you could imagine that if you move the points around that you might equally well first fuse D and E and then only later fuse this group with E. Okay, to summarize we have seen three different algorithms basically to do clustering. The first two were partitional clustering algorithms uh, where the first one was a hard partition clustering and the algorithm is called k-means. It's a very simple and fast algorithm. The second one uses soft partitional clustering Gaussians that represent the clusters and where the assignment of the points to the clusters is sort of probabilistic. And the third approach is this dendrogram approach here, which is an agglomerative hierarchical clustering. And we've seen two versions here, the single link method and the complete link method.